All right, here we go. Scott Merritt and Brandon Brown are going to jump center. Conference USA official tonight, Tom O'Neill, Scott Thornley, and Kerry Sitton. And we are underway with Marquette going to have the first crack with the basketball. Travis Diener in the backcourt running the show, coming off a terrific game against South Florida. In fact, this entire Golden Eagles offense was outstanding. That ball tipped away. Stay with Marquette, 22 on the shot clock. An outstanding offensive performance against South Florida Saturday night in Milwaukee. Very important for Dwayne Wade to let the game come to him. He's got to set his teammates up. He's got to play some good defense, and he cannot rush things. 13 to shoot. Wade still on the dribble. Now pull up, pump fake off the glass, and Dwayne Wade in the books right away. Marquette up 2 nothing. Well, he just took what the defense gave him, an eight-foot banker. The ATM's always open 24 <laughs> hours a day. This is Watari Marsh. Top of the key. Now comes over Byron Parker again, the late starting change for the Green Wave and Sean Finney. This is Nick Sinville who's been hot of late. Wayne Tinsley, Brandon Brown, 12 to shoot. Into the post, Tinsley. Back to Marsh. I think that, I think that's your crowd, Mike. Marsh, the second leading scorer at 13 points per game. Dina probing early, which is what he should do. He has to figure out what his defensive man is capable of. Can he guard him to the left, to the right? Will he shade him? And can Dina get behind him, penetrate, and dish? Foul was on Parker, the first, obviously, of the game. Tulane with the early lead here, 3-2. Both teams making their opening shots. No surprise. This is two of the three best shooting teams in Conference USA. As Todd Townsend goes glass. Marquette back up 4-3. Nice court, court pass by uh, Dwayne Wade. Marquette first in shooting at 50%. Tulane third at 47% from the field. And open dunk. Wayne Tinsley. Green wave five, Todd Townsend tries to answer and does. A three, four, Marquette Townsend has five straight. Marquette off to a good start offensively. Now they've got to push up a little more defensively. Parker running away from Diener into the corner. Now Marsh. Up and under for Marsh, rebound cleared. Marquette, Scott Merritt on the glass. Whistle and a turnover. Dwayne Wade traveled with the basketball. Tulane will have it. Dwayne Wade can basically get a shot anytime he wants to. So he's really going to have to gauge when to hold him and when to fold him and when to help his teammates out get involved in the offense. Inside pass. Nice catch by Tinsley. Can't get it off. Rejected out of there. I think Wade got a piece of it. And Marquette clears away the basketball. Wade into the front court looking for Robert Jackson. His first touch of the night. Quickly double team. Merritt left open. Too open. Back to back traveling calls on the Golden Eagles. MU, however, coming out in the right frame of mind. A little ill tempered, which is what you really need on the road. They do a good job of protecting the basketball. Third fewest turnovers in Conference USA, just 12 a game, but two quick ones there. Tinsley a catch and converts. Full court pressure now by Tulane. That they call it off. Freshman Steve Novak quickly up off the bench, as is Terry Sanders for Marquette. Wade converting. Marquette up by two, kick out Tinsley. Brandon Brown can shoot from out there, but that was ugly. Diener quickly into the front court. Townsend, well short. Stolen away by Scott Merritt. Looks like he missed Robert Jackson, was open for a second. Well, he should have shot it himself. He was two feet from the basket and tried to squeeze a pass and could have just as easily been a turnover. 20 to shoot, Merritt on the dribble. See, there you go. 
You cannot force that pass underneath the basket. There's not enough space. Brandon Brown backing down Merritt over the top, tipped away. Should be Marquette basketball. And it is. We have a timeout on the floor. A hot shooting start for both teams. Marquette with an early lead. 9-7 will return to Fogelman Arena. After this, you're watching Marquette basketball on TV 41. Roth, George Thompson with you down here from New Orleans. Hot shooting start for both teams. Marquette at 80%. Tulane hit their first three shots, have missed their last four. They're at 43%. Marquette has turned it over a couple times, however, that cuts in and nearly turn it over there off the inbounds out of a timeout. Terry Sanders is in the game now, a junior from Milwaukee, number 40. Freshman Steve Novak from Brown Deer, number 20, has had two terrific games. Diener left open. Out of bounds, two to lane. Travis has not had the same consistency, George, with the shot that he did as a freshman. Is that a byproduct of his workload this year? No question about it. Offense, defense, running the team. And that takes a lot out of a person. Foul down low. Sanders trying to deny Tinsley position. Uh, but as the season progresses, I'm sorry, Chris, as the season progresses, as we talked about with uh, the homer on the radio side, he will get to a point where his body and his brain will adjust to all the things he has to do, and his shot will start to fall. Brandon Spann, number two, is into the game, typically a starter for Tulane, but they're trying to bring him off the bench, add a little juice to that second unit, and get a little more defense in the first unit. How about that defense, George? Wade with another lunch packing, and clears it off the loose ball. MU had fallen back into a zone. And Wade fouled by Watari Marsh going to the hole, and he'll shoot two. Well, Marquette will keep underneath its own hoop with a fresh 35. Could have easily been two. Thought he signaled two shots. Instead, they take it out. Novak. Tom Crean shouting out the play. Wayne Wade resets. Into the corner, Novak. I think maybe that rim that's a little off angle. Both last two shots from Marquette have bounced up and over the backboard. That thing checked out. <laughs> well, what do we need to put a leveler on that uh, thing? Maybe. Chris? A little home cooking. Lane on a two minute scoring drought here, and we've got another whistle down low, and again it involves Terry Sanders. Thank you. <laughs> team fouls not yet a factor for either team, both teams with only two right now. Terry going to get his money's worth here. That's two fouls in about a minute. Dwayne Wade goes to the bench. Joe Chapman, the freshman from Illinois, is in. And then a quick turnover ripped out of there by Novak. And here comes Travis Diener on the push into the hands of Chapman. Novak, Sanders, and Merritt in the front court. This is Sanders. Nice move. Nice power move to the basket. You run plays to try to get close to the basket. Once you get that entry pass, Chris, as you know, down low, within two or three feet, you've got to put the basketball up. The worst that can happen is you get yourself, as Sanders goes hard to the hoop, was hacked in the act, gets himself to the line for two. Sanders at 65% from the line. This is the first one. And a career high seven rebound Saturday night against South Florida. Marcus Kinzer, a 5'11 guard, number 11 into the game now for the Green Wave as Marsh sits down and takes a break. That one's strong off the iron. Good rebound, Novak. Got to go up. He's got off to go glass. up. Nice, nice offensive rebound by Novak. He's really starting to come on now. Perfect from the field the other night against South Florida. Missed his first one here, a three-pointer, but that was a tough shot in traffic. Marquette up by four. Wild shot, rebound taken out of there by Sanders. As a matter of fact, Novak cracked the game open in St. Louis with those two threes and then followed it up with uh, four straight free throws. 
Good hustle by Novak there to track down the tip ball. Diener was trying to skip it cross court to him. Joe Chapman in the game starting to get a little more playing time, work himself into the rotation. Oh, that's the third travel tonight on Marquette. MU plus four with three empty trips down the floor with no attempt at the hoop. And still shooting very well from the field, so that lead, you would figure, would be even greater had they not turned it over as well as they're shooting the basketball. This is Kinzer, 5'11 sophomore guard, Span. It's not a big team down here at Tulane, that's why they've had problems rebounding the basketball. Span can shoot it, in and out. Rebound by Tinsley, but stolen away by Diener. And it'll go to, oh, they're gonna change the call. It will stay with the green wave. Officials talk it over and they'll change the call. There's the replay, let's see. I don't think we could really see conclusively from this angle, but uh, better a bad call early than late. Four minute drought here for the green wave now. Missed their last five shots. Out of bounds. MU should be separating more, capitalizing on these empty trips down the floor by the Green Wave. Full court pressure now. They're not a big pressing team, but they will do this to try and disrupt an offense. And that was pretty good right there. Nearly got it. That's twice now, George. Marquette has had problems inbounding the ball with Scott Merritt and they'll make a change. Now Diener will trigger. Again, guys have to really pursue the basketball and not get knocked off their routes by the defensive man. Diener trapped, Novak gets it at midcourt. Nice find to Merritt. And he traveled again. MU had finally broken the press, had the numbers 2-1-1. Merritt took an extra step. Four empty trips down the floor. As Tulane continues to be in the deep freeze. Five turnovers now for the Golden Eagles. And you wonder, George, if they'll look back on this moment in the game where Tulane has had such a hard time scoring and they haven't been able to separate. Span forcing a three with plenty of time on the clock. Novak, another rebound. Diener on the push. Diener down the lane, scooping, scoring. Travis Diener. Marquette by six. This is Marcus Kinzer. Little trouble there, gets free. Kinsley passes up the shot into the corner. Down it goes. Brandon Brown now has over 1,000 points in his two-lane career and also ends a five-minute drought for Tulane. Novak has a lot of skills. He can shoot the ball, obviously, from the wing. And he can also help break the press. Chapman cut off. Now back to Diener, 13, 12, 11 on the shot clock. High screen down to the corner now for Chapman, the force. Green wave on the run. Here comes Tinsley. Back to back threes for Tulane. Ties the game at 13. Robert Jackson and Chris Grimm at the scorer's table waiting to go in and stem the tide here at the Green Wave. You made a good point earlier, Chris. Marquette does not want to look back at the scoring drought that Tulane had where they did not capitalize. Timeout on the floor, George, tied at 13. They'll talk it over and get the starters back in for the Golden Eagles. You're watching Marquette basketball on TV 41. Come take your team to see our team. Marquette shooting 60% from the field, but the three-pointer, however, keeping Tulane in the game. 
shooting three of six from near 50%. And they've hit their last two, George, to tie the game here at 13. And Dwayne Wade back in the game, along with Todd Townsend, and Chris Grimm has checked in. 6'10", freshman center out of Michigan. And Chris Grimm making his presence felt a little too strongly there, picked up a foul, setting the screen on the baseline. But it's the third foul on Marquette. First on Grimm. Big Ivan Pietrovich is into the game. Number 44, 6'11", junior from Belgrade. But like a lot of Europeans, they say he likes to play outside much more than he likes to play inside. Tinsley cut off at the basket, so Brandon Spann will reload. Seven on the shot clock, working against Townsend. Tinsley in trouble. A force on the way. And a bailout foul. So Tulane gets bailed out as the clock wound down to one second. It was definitely a foul, George, but it may have been after the buzzer. Well, and I think that's what Coach Crean was arguing. Either way, Brandon got himself to the line and was bailed out by a foul. You don't figure he's going to miss very much. He's made 21 of his last 22 from the charity stripe. Now make it 22 of 23, 86% on the year. That puts Tulane up 14-13. Mark kept playing great defense for 34 seconds and then bailing uh, Tulane out. Perfect 2-2 two two and more pressure and more problems inbounding the basketball. Tulane doesn't do this a lot, George. Do you think they surprised Marquette with as much as they pressed here in the first half? Either way, Marquette should have enough capable ball handlers out there to handle that situation. Chris Grimm back to the bench. Terry Sanders, Sanders back in. Travis Diener is out off the inbounds and lobbed to Pjevcevic, and he stepped on the end line. Stepped right on the baseline, and the turnover answers Marquette's turnover, so Tulane can't capitalize. The lead is 15-13. The green wave on an 8-0 run. Tulane falling back now. Pressure, release, pressure. That is how a full-court press is effective. Merritt backing down. Merritt up under. Can't convert, but will go to the line. Strong move in the post by Scott Merritt. MU has to continue to probe the inside. Scott Merritt can have his way down there, as can Sanders. But Marquette has to take their time, get the ball down low, and get some high percentage shots. They've also got to push up on defense. Tulane's getting some wide open looks at that triple. Foul is on Brandon Brown, his first. Merritt converts. He's got it 76% from the line this season. MU making things difficult for themselves after getting off to a good start and then letting Tulane climb back into this thing. Missed the second, but Marquette cracks the scoreboard for the first time in over two and a half minutes. Still down by one. Wade elevating, can't get the block, but altered the shot. Townsend clears the rebound. Wayne Wade on the attack. No call as he's knocked to the ground. Offensive rebound, battle four, tipped out of bounds. I still haven't seen a signal, George, but they're pointing to Tulane's lining up to inbound, but I never saw the signal from any of the officials. Here's the no call on Wade. Well, there was no call because there was no foul there. Span open three, George. Pjevcevic unable to get position. He commits the foul. Dwayne trying to help the referee a little bit there with a little old flopper roof. <laughs> Needs to work on his acting. Tom Crean talking things over with Scott Merritt. It goes to the bench and Robert Jackson back in. 
Jackson's been very quiet in this game. He hasn't even touched the ball very often. His turnover there, a tough bounce pass for Wade to handle. Tulane takes it away. A lot of turnovers here in a sloppy first half for Marquette. Fifteen, fourteen. to lay in the lead as we put you on the floor here at Fogelman. Marcus Kinzer now calling a new play with 12 on the shot clock. Yevchevich pump fake. Offensive rebound, Brandon Brown. Something you don't see a lot of from Tulane. Now he wants it back. Another offensive rebound, George. Bad things happen when you do not get the defensive rebound. Third foul now on Terry Sanders. The green wave getting three cracks at it. And any decent college team, any decent CYO team, Brandon goes to the hoop hard, is hacked over the back as a result of Tulane getting two offensive rebounds. 15 foul on Marquette, but third on Sanders. Span continues his run at the line. Three for three tonight. Merritt in for Sanders. Marquette now down two. With the exception of the first three or four minutes, Tulane has started to dictate pace of the game. And that was one of the things we talked about at the top. Timeout on the floor, Tulane with a three-point lead here at Fogelman Arena where they have yet to lose this season. We'll come back. You're watching Marquette Basketball on TV 41. Still shooting a very respectable 55% from the field. Tulane only five of 17 from two-point land, but three of eight from beyond the three-point arc. And Marquette has really led the turnover derby. Marquette with eight and Tulane with three. More pressure from Tulane. They've shown a lot of full court pressure here. Foul there on Dwayne Wade. Wade doing a nice job of splitting the defenders that time. Seventh team foul. He'll step to the line for a one and one. Surprising, George, as much full court pressure as we've seen from Tulane, Marquette's turnovers, a majority, have come in the front court, not the back court. Unforced turnover. Yeah. A lot, Wade, of, a lot of traveling calls. Wade shooting 74% from the free throw line. Three points now for Wade in the game. And he will try and make it a one point game. Marquette has to try and wrestle control of the pace of this game before the end of the first half here. Tom Crean back with his starting five on the floor. Tulane playing with two players off the bench. Brandon Brown and Tinsley have gone the whole way. This is Brown underneath. Dump for Tinsley. More pressure. Marquette trying to beat it. Ooh, Travis Diener taking a tumble there. Ball out of bounds to Marquette. A lot of contact, but no foul. Marquette has to look up the floor as well. It's easier to beat the press via the pass rather than the dribble. Once you get behind that press, you've got the numbers. Three on two, two on one. Oh, that's easy for Dwayne Wade after hearing it from the student body behind us, questioning his skill level. He sliced through that rather easily. One point to Lane Lee, 19-18, 6.45 here to go in the opening half. Stick around at halftime. We'll have an interview with Marquette head coach Tom Crean and also give you a news break here on TV 41. Foul underneath the basket, Robert Jackson and Brandon Brown. Tussling, the foul will go against Jackson. First on Jackson, sixth on the Golden Eagles. Pjevtrovic out, Tinsley back in. Excuse me. Ixinville returns to the game. This is Brandon Spann. 
Kinzer. Now Tinsley. Open look, Kinzer. Rebound, Jackson. Arquette with a chance to go back on top here. Merritt keeps it from being a turnover. Jackson double teamed in the corner. Somebody's Put you on the open. Floor. Somebody's open. And it wasn't Diener who got his own rebound and then pushed out of bounds. That bailed out an ugly offensive set for the Golden Eagles. Yes, it did. Diener doing a good thing following his shot. Coming up with the offensive rebound. Came right back to him. And was pushed out of bounds. Diener hits the front end of the bonus. Eight team foul on Tulane, and that ties the game at 19. MU needs to go into the locker room at halftime with some type of momentum. Diener now has four points in the game, and Marquette back on top. 20 to 19 at the six minute mark here of the first half. MU falling back into a zone now. Brown passes up the three into the corner, span open. He tries to flop, can't get that, can't get the roll. Here we go. Flush on the fly from Dwayne Wade, and Marquette now leads by three. Ten floor, everybody out. <laughs> and that student body behind me, Georgia, was questioning Dwayne Wade's skill a few minutes ago. They may They're leave, quiet. They may want to leave sleeping dogs live. Oh, Wade with the steal, and he's stay inbound. The official, what is this now? The official fell out of bounds. Dwayne Wade is out of bounds, sitting on the bench. So is the official, and I don't know what he's calling. He was he, was he in a position to even make a call? <laughs> He thinks so. I think what he's calling is that someone touched Dwayne Wade from the Marquette bench. That, that was a very interesting situation. I, if we could see it again, we might <laughs> see that someone had stuck their hand out to protect Dwayne, but he was still in play, and it was still a live ball. I think that was the issue. In any case, Tulane has the basketball down by three. Now with five minutes to go here in the opening half, Steve Novak back in, number 20 for Marquette. Marquette's best ally right now is some good defense. Kinzer. So far, they've been unable to bust the zone, even though they've had some look called timeout. Great play, Scott Merritt. MU starting to come on defensively now. That play reminded me of some things I've seen Coach Al do several times, where he saw the ball going out of bounds, and he would kind of run over and kick it. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep it in bounds. <laughs> It rubs off after a while. <laughs> Here comes the flying flush from Wade. A yoke. I think Travis was a little pumped there. Well, that's, uh, they usually get that play once a game now. As a matter of fact, in St. Louis, that got Marquette really pumped and back into the game. Dwayne Wade was not having a good offensive game. He got the flush on one side, and they tried it on the other side. Scott Merritt juggles the bounce pass. Boy, Marquette is up. Here we go. I got you. Good catch. Yeah, that was one hand. Did you see Good that? catch, partner. It rubs off sitting next to you. <laughs> Marquette seemingly allergic to the basketball right now. The bounce pass has been very unfriendly to them this evening. Wade. Driving. Jackson, the offensive rebound. Jackson hacked on the way up, no call. Kinzer on the run, floating and filling.
Quickly back is Marquette, now with a one-point lead, and now a whistle. Very, very aggressive dribble penetration tonight by Diener, and it's paying dividends. Now back to the free throw line for a one-and-one. One. Ninth team foul on Tulane. Diener with four points, two of them coming from the foul line. MU having a tough time separating with 4.13 left. Just plus one, now plus two. They have to continue to play some tough defense going into the locker room and get much more crisp offensively. It's now a 10-4 Marquette run. They're back up by three. Coming up on four minutes now left in the first half. Tinsley and Brown have gone the whole way for Sean Finney's green wave. Kinzer has played a lot of minutes off the bench. Wade into the passing lane, nearly had the steal. Couldn't control it, it'll stay with Tulane with 15 on the clock. And a timeout on the floor. 3.53 left to go here in the first half. Marquette starting to take better care of the basketball. They're back on top by three. We'll return to Fogelman right after this. You are watching Marquette basketball on TV 41. Chris Roth and George Thompson back with you here as the Marquette Golden Eagles. Leading 24-21 here over Tulane, George. MU continues to shoot well from the field. Eight of 16 from two-point land, only one of five from beyond the three-point arc. And uh, Tulane only shooting 31% and 27% from trade land, respectively. However, Marquette has nine empty trips down the floor, nine turnovers, and Tulane only with four. Eight of those turnovers, George, coming before the 11 minute mark in the first half. So Marquette starting to clamp down on their sloppiness. Just two on the shot clock. Oh, that's too much room inside and cleaned up by Brandon Brown. Boy, they got a great look at the basket with time winding down on the shot clock, and that allows them to set up the pressure. Dwayne Wade turns it over. That's what you were talking about before. He used the pass to beat the pressure, George, instead of the dribble. Right. Mark. Especially two dribbles. now for Marquette, they only average 12 per game. MU in a 2-3 zone right now, or what it looks like anyway. Zones anymore, Chris. Uh, that pass going to be taken away by Travis Steiner. Change configurations when the situation dictates. Steve Novak. Novak continues his hot shooting. He has doubled his averages since conference play began. And that was a very confident shot, George. One dribble on the transition, picked it up and shot it. Nice deep stroke. Not the hesitation they saw earlier in the year as the three-pointer answered by Brandon Spann. MU has to get some easy baskets off of this full court pressure. They have not been able to do so. There's the pass to Wade cutting in, spinning. Ooh, pretty shot, Dwayne Wade. And again, that silences the critics behind me. Well, that was relatively easy. And Marquette has continued to push the ball up the floor. Diener with his head up. So Wade slashing in from the right-hand side, and Wade finished with a flourish. 29-26 Marquette, 2.23 and counting here in the first half. Span into the corner, Brown, 15 on the shot clock. Tinsley looking for room, picked his pocket, Dwayne Wade. Oh, Wade with another kiss off the glass. He's got 14 now. Wade starting to smooch nicely with the glass. <laughs> Five-point lead. Largest in a long time for Marquette. 
Tulane has not adjusted well to the zone. And this time it's the green wave that take an extra step. MU falling back into that 2-3 zone, which turns into a matchup sometimes. And Tulane has not really adjusted to it, and I believe that's why Coach Sean has called a timeout. And, and not very happy. And he's trying to build a program here, and he's trying to fire up his team. And right now he's doing it with players that he didn't really recruit, George. Most of these guys, Marsh has been a four-year starter, and man, he is just reading them the riot act. Well, it's always tough for a coach to come in and not have any players that he recruited or had a hand in bringing into the school, particularly if he's trying to change the system that they played under for two or three years. They got three three-year starters, a four-year starter, or a two-year starter. Who was a transfer brought in by the former coaching staff, Perry Clark. So most of Finney's guys that he's brought in here in the last three years don't play a lot of minutes for him. And now he's trying to work the officials for a little bit later on. Marquette up by five, a minute 23 left in the first half. Dwayne Wade has hit his last two shots from the field. He has 14 points here in the half. Jackson has yet to score in this half. Merritt to Novak. 14 on the shot clock. Plenty of time left to get a good shot off. With eight to go on the clock, Merritt and pushed underneath is Robert Jackson, so that'll stay right here. That is the 10th team foul. So Jackson will go to the free throw line. Marquette starting to regain some composure. Shot by Merritt, good wide open shot. Jackson with some good offensive position was ridden out of there. Pushed out of there by Sinville who picked up the foul. So two free throws for Robert. And his first point of the game, Marquette's second leading scorer, the only player to score in double figures all in every game, excuse me, this season. And he finally gets a point here with a minute and one tick left in the first half. Jackson shooting 73% from there. They have not utilized Jackson height and weight to their advantage very much here in the uh, first stanza. Yeah, George, he really hasn't even touched the ball exactly. very much, much less in scoring position. So after taking a bit of shut eye, Marquette plus seven with under a minute left. alone three second differential between game and shot clock and now they'll give it up to Dwayne Wade and let him work 20 to shoot 23 and a half and now they'll run it Diener Novak, six on the shot clock. Better get it up. Oh, a call in favor of Marquette. Blocking foul on Kinzer. And Marquette gets bailed up. Oh, and Finney just going to get one right here, I believe. I believe he's going to get one. There it is. Sean Finney. Did, did Finney get the T-bone dropped on him, I believe, he, I believe he did. You know, that jacket came off real quick, and now that they've renovated this 70-year-old building and put in air conditioning, there's really no excuse for that, George. <laughs> Here crowd, it is, George. Actually, that was a foul. He did not give Diener any room to roam. And the crowd behind us shouting something like bull pucky or... <laughs> So Novak will shoot the technicals. Could be a real big swing here, George, with 6.4 left in the first half. No question about it. Because after this, Travis will get to shoot his two free throws. And this is the type of momentum that Marquette needed going into the locker room that we were talking about. And uh, pressure situation for Novak, who just continues to mature here before our very eyes. 
in conference play. Can't say enough about him. He, uh, yeah, there he is. He's clearly moving. Yeah. Novak very instrumental in the St. Louis win. Two big threes back to back from long range. Helped stem the tide while Dwayne Wade was out with the rib injury. And then four free throws in the pressure cooker. Diener perfect from the foul line makes it a nine point advantage. Spin hits. Well, that saved a little face for Tulane. A pretty drive by Brandon Spann to convert. And Sean Finney going to spend a little extra time with the official that made that call. A four-point trip down the floor for Marquette. Tulane able to answer before the horn to make it 37-30 here at the break. Stick around for halftime, everybody. We've got an interview with head coach Tom Green. We also have a news break coming your way here on TV 41. Then we'll come back and recap the first half for you and get you set for second half action. Right here, you're watching Marquette basketball on TV 41. Better at the free throw line in terms of more attempts than Tulane. No question about it, Chris, and that's a very important thing. Marquette shooting 81% from the free throw line and getting uh, 13 of 16. Tulane only getting four attempts from the charity strike. So here we go. Tulane tried to get a little momentum with the Brandon Span buzzer beater before halftime. Let's see if they carry it out after the locker room. They'll get first crack. Watari Marsh. Ooh, pretty adjustment by Watari Marsh. See, that seven-point number is very critical. If you come down and stop defensively and you come down and make a two or a three, then you're in the general vicinity of a double-figure lead. Diener. Ooh, rattles it in. A much more friendly rim on this side of the court. Diener now with 11 in the game to go along with four assists, and Marquette leads by eight. Diener, six of six from the charity stripe in the first half. Into the corner, Marsh to span. This is Wayne Tinsley. Now Marsh, hesitation move back to Tinsley. Along with Nick Sinville and Brandon Brown in the game. This is their typical starting five. They did not start span at the beginning of the game, however. Went with Byron Parker. Dwayne Wade, 14 points in the first half to Diener. Diener. Todd Townsend hit his first two buckets. Diener off the mark and the rebound to Sinville. Tinsley on the force nearly got it to go, but picked up the foul on Townsend. Tulane coming with the hard push after the Diener miss. Marquette did not react well getting back defensively. Townsend getting all arm that time, and uh, it was cast up and almost got it to fall. This is not a very good free throw shooting team. 66% George on the year that is their first miss tonight but as we just mentioned a moment ago they just haven't been there very often well they they only had four attempts in the uh, first half and that's rare for a home team one of two for Tinsley Marquette's lead is back to seven where it was in the locker room at halftime again Tulane has not lost here at Fogelman they play a couple of games down at the arena where the new New Orleans Hornets play across from the Superdome. They lost both those games, but here in the band box, they are unbeaten at 7-0. Scott Merritt aggressive. Robert Jackson couldn't get it to go, and the rebound cleared away by little Brandon Spann. Brandon Brown and Robert Jackson got caught out of position and will pick up the foul. Two quick ones on Marquette, George. Marquette still plus seven. They've got to rely defensively, and they've got to come down and be very, very opportunistic offensively. Skip pass to Marsh. He knifes inside and gets a layup. As we say that, Marsh threads the total Marquette defense for easy laying. Five-point lead for Marquette. Wade leaves it for Todd Townsend. Now they're starting to look for Jackson. He didn't even touch the ball much in the first half. Leave for Wade. Oh, 
baby. Count it. Great find by Jackson on the cut to Wade. He Even the Tulane fans were astounded with that one. Wade coming across with a nice curl move. Could have just as easy lay, laid it in, but came up with the flush. Nice little chin up at the end for an extra bonus. Yeah, he was point. trying to protect Todd Townsend there. Three point play for Wade. Marquette up by eight, matching their largest lead. See, here's where they can make things easy for themselves by playing defense. Marsh again, boy, they have not had an answer for Watari Marsh. He didn't play much in the first half, but he has been very aggressive here. Coming out of the locker room, George. Were it not for him, Marquette would be starting to pull away. Oh, Scott Merritt left open, so is Jackson. Jackson gets the easy one. Good observation by Scott Merritt. That's the first field goal for Robert Jackson. And that's the reason why he shoots almost 60% from the field. MU has to shut down the interior. They've Dwayne got a, Wade got the, got the poke away, but couldn't control it. They've got to force Tulane to beat them and come from behind from the outside. They cannot continue to give up those easy lay-ins. But you have to give Tulane some credit. Those have been some pretty nice, tasty little moves getting to the hoop. Marsh has been able to knife through the zone. Marsh doing a nice job of dribble penetration. Now Tinsley dribble drive and draws the foul. So the foul starting to mount up here on Marquette. First on Wade, third on the team here quickly, and maybe all that barking by Sean Finney before the half is starting to work to his advantage. Well, generally speaking, a coach usually wants to get a technical in certain situations. And when he took his coat off, uh, that pretty much guaranteed it. Oh, what Tari Marsh. He's got the last eight points for Tulane, and it's back to a five-point Marquette advantage. Wade left open. Ooh, a tough angle on the glass. It's friendly kissing over there, too, George. The bank's always open. Tinsley thought he had the lane. Marquette takes away the miss. Wade in transition, moves into close range and knocks home another one. Dwayne Wade on fire here in the second half. And you converting nicely now from defense to offense. Now they've got to stop Tulane a couple times. Marsh finally misses here in the second half. That ball out of bounds, it'll go to Marquette. With a timeout on the floor, Marquette has pushed out to a nine-point lead. Starting to clean things up a little bit here are the Golden Eagles. They lead by nine, their largest of the game. We'll come back to Fogelman Arena. After these messages, you are watching Marquette Basketball on TV 41. A little bit of a national beating. They were so high in the rankings at number eight, and they lost those games at East Carolina and Dayton, and people were starting to sour on them nationally. Well, they win at St. Louis, and uh, a solid performance here may right the ship. Yeah, nothing helps like winning on the road. I think you get uh, extra points, really, for winning on the road, because, especially in conference play. And this is a stretch of five out of six games on the road for Marquette. Dwayne Wade, oh, man, is he smoking, George. He's smoking high. Ten points now in the second half. 24 for the game. And I don't hear any jeers from behind me. Robert Jackson picks up the foul. Micro Wade has really heated up here in the uh, second stanza. Has taken over the game offensively. Four team fouls now on Marquette. Just one for Tulane here in the second half. For just inside of 15 minutes. Long way to go. Well, Marquette playing much better 
than they did in that first half in the first 12 minutes of the game. Joe Chatham in the game right now with Travis Diener. Tra Chapman, Terry Sanders in. Sanders had three fouls in the first half. Ooh, muscled up and in by Brandon Brown. Found a crack there. Just a sliver of light to get that up and in, but he did it. And it's now a 10-point Marquette lead. This is Chapman here. With Diener out, Dwayne Wade runs the point. They haven't been able to get Karen Bradley's knee healthy, and they really don't have a, a point guard beyond Travis Diener right now, and Wade becomes that guy. And just got an assist to himself, George. <laughs> Well, we're on microwave now. 26 and counting for Mr. Wade. Tinsley missed the bunny. Whipped inside, Jackson up and under, can't convert. Cleared out of there by Marsh. Too far on Tinsley, so Marsh will load up the three. It's another one here in the second half. He's got 12 points in the second half. 15 for the game. Ball tipped away on the entry pass to Jackson, and Tulane comes out of there with it. They have been unable to get Jackson going in the post. It's been a result of, my goodness, have yourself a game in the first seven minutes of the second half, Mr. Marsh. Well, Dwayne Wade took a little nippy nap on defense that time. 14 points and a half for Watari Marsh is answering Dwayne Wade's arsenal point for point here. Jackson had position, they couldn't find him. Marsh wanted the call on Wade. Wade wanted the call on Marsh, and Wade will get the benefit there. That was a terrible call. Here it is, George. That was a terrible call. Perfect defensive position. That's what you call your basic reputation call, Chris. Uh, Sean Finney still has his coat on, in case you're wondering. Diener comes back in, misses the shot, span the rebound. Scott Merritt and Steve Novak in, but none of them can do anything about Watari Marsh. Tulane refusing to go away. He has 16 of their 19 points here in the half. Eight two, Green Wave run. Sanders has it poked away, he was open and now he's down. Sanders went down hard. Marsh, well, he finally missed one, and Dwayne Wade clears the rebound. What was a 12-point Marquette lead is now down to five, and Tom Crean wants a timeout. Well, nothing comes easy on the road. Marquette had a chance to really assault this thing away, but Tulane really came back offensively Played some good defense, stopped Marquette, even though Dwayne Wade has gone berserk on them offensively, but they've stayed right in this contest. Let's we'll see if Marquette has the answer. Their lead has been trimmed to five. You're watching Marquette basketball on TV 41. This is Marquette basketball camp. We'll get that number up for you again. 414-288-5937. We'll get that information to you again as we return to live action here. Travis Keener in the game. Another turnover there for Marquette, their 13th of the game. Byron Parker in the game, Brandon Spann, and Tulane's microwave with Tari Marsh along with Brandon Brown, and this is Nick Sinville. 11 minutes left to go here in the game. Up and under for Spann. Rebound battle taken out of there by Merritt. Diener and Wade. Wade flying, scooping, and scoring. Nice two-on-two -two basketball. Marquette coming with the hard push after the defensive stop. 
14 points now in the half, George, for Dwayne Wade. 28 in the game. Inside Sinville, and there's the reason why he shot so well in the last couple of games. 65% gets the layup. Still a five-point Marquette advantage. Jump out on Diener. Merrick gets the basketball. Steve Novak, terrific first half. Open look for Travis. Drains it. Travis continues to shoot with confidence, even though his percentages are down so far this year, but they'll come around. Second three for Travis tonight. Gives him 14 in the game, and Marquette's lead back up to eight. And a foul off the ball on Terry Sanders. That'll be his fourth and the team's fifth. Sanders having all kind of trouble defensively, unable to front, unable to side, and missing a few defensive assignments, which has resulted in a few layups. Timeout. We'll keep it right here as Marquette up by eight. The foul on Sanders is fourth. He'll be replaced by Chris Grimm. When we come back, we'll get you back to the information on the boys basketball camp here while we have a moment. Boys ages 5 to 17, you can receive special instruction from head coach Tom Crean, the reigning Conference USA Coach of the Year, not to mention his terrific staff. And members of the Marquette basketball team will also be on hand making sure you leave camp with a winning perspective on the game. So call 414-288-5937 today or tonight and ask how you can sign up for this summer's Marquette Summer Basketball Camp. 414-288-5937. Spots are limited, so make sure you get on the horn and call, and we'll see you at camp. Well, at the three-quarter pole with 9.43 left, Christopher, Marquette with five team fouls, and uh, Tulane with only two, so that could become a factor down the stretch. Terry Sanders, the only player in foul trouble, though, for Marquette, now has four. Sanders has had a difficult time tonight defensively. Sometimes the matchups just don't quite fit, and Sanders has had uh, his problems staying in good defensive position. And we should mention that Robert Jackson also has three personal fouls. And we can't lay it all at the, the feet of Sanders as well. There have been some uncontested layups, some missed defensive assignments along the baseline by all of Marquette's big men. Well, Watari Marsh also has just been scorching hot here in the second half. 16 of their 21 points here since the break. Marsh didn't play a lot of minutes in the first half. He only played six minutes, probably for defensive reasons, but now Sean Finney has to keep him in there for obvious offensive reasons. So Span, Marsh, even Pjevtrovich is in. He's got the basketball now. And Brown, Grimm is in the basketball game for Jackson. Scott Merritt has come in replacing Sanders, along with Novak, Diener, and Wade. 20 on the shot clock, plenty of time. Byron Parker. And Marsh nearly fumbled it. He'll attack Dwayne Wade. Parker pull up in and out, rebound stolen away by Brown, and he's able to draw the foul. Again, Marquette playing some good defense, unable to come up with the defensive rebound. Grimm needed to really get a handle on that thing. Jump shot, comes out. Grimm with great offensive position, had two hands on the basketball, and couldn't get a grip on it. So Brown will go to the free throw line, and again, this is not a good rebounding team. So anytime you give them second chances, you really, really have to kick yourself because they're just not aggressive on the offensive glass. Next to the bottom in rebounding of Conference USA is Tulane. Brown maybe will bail them out, though, by missing a pair. How about that? You can tell the future is well, unbelievable. Huh, I see, I gotta go to the casino. 
Marquette up by eight, 59-51, right at the nine minute mark. Novak guarded by Marsh. Todd Townsend fumbled the pass, two on one break. Well, that was easy. Byron Parker swooping in, 59-53 Marquette. That was one of those unforced turnovers, George, that we saw a lot of in the first half. Pretty move, Scott Merritt to the left hand. Smooth move, Merritt. Nice isolation down low. Quieting the crowd a little bit here. Marquette back up by eight. Chris Grimm just got a hold. Playing in front of the offensive player. Number, number seven on MU. We tried to talk about that a little bit. Uh, Tulane not a particularly good free throw shooting team. Only shooting 64% from there. Now Brown missed a pair the last time down the floor. That time he makes one. And we'll get the bonus here, 61-54. Marquette had a seven-point lead at halftime. Now it is six. And bears mentioning Marquette this year, nine and one, George, when leading at the break. 30 and two over the last two seasons. Let's see if they can hold on here. Oh, Merritt, mercy. Couldn't get any mercy from the rim. That was a beautiful move. Everything but the points. Yevtrovich loads up a three. Long rebound, Parker. Take it away from Novak. Kinzer drives, scores. Four-point game. Bad things happen when you do not get the defensive rebound. Your defensive assignment is not finished until you get the rebound and head up the floor. Dwayne Wade back at the scorer's table, needing to come in. Scott Merritt on the dribble, cut off. Novak, off balance, off the mark. Two on one break. Pretty catch and convert from Watari Marsh. It's a two point Marquette lead with seven minutes to go. And a timeout. Well, the Fogelman faithful are alive, that's for sure. As well they should be because their team has given them something to cheer about. Coming back from a double digit deficit and really giving them uh, some hope that they can possibly pull this game out. Well, they've almost caught them, but they've definitely reeled them in. It's a two point Marquette game. We'll come back after these messages. You're watching Marquette basketball on TV 41. Back to live action. Robert Jackson backs in and scores. Just the second field goal for Robert Jackson. The other one was a dunk. Dwayne Wade back into the contest. Tom Crean couldn't wait any longer. Six points for Wade. Here's Marsh. In and out. And this time Marquette secures the basketball. Rare miss for Watari Marsh here in the second half. 16 points in the half. Dump down to Jackson, trying to establish him. Convert it, and the foul. Robert Jackson coming through with some key baskets here down the stretch. Marquette finally able to get those entry passes with Jackson in some good scoring position. So Jackson now with eight, he'll go to the free throw line. Jackson taking it hard to the hoop. He paid for it but gets a chance to cash in on three-point play the old-fashioned way. 73% from the line. Too strong there. His first miss tonight. He had made his first two. Six-point Marquette advantage. Townsend, Wade, Diener, Jackson, and Merritt. Starting five. Well, that ball was loose, went through the hands of Jackson. Tulane catches a break. Triple team, Brandon Brown gets it back out. A 
got Diener up in the air. He commits the foul. And that'll put Byron Parker at the free throw line. The eighth foul on Marquette. Meanwhile, Tulane starting to close in on the super bonus. Marquette four fouls away from being able to shoot a one and one. So the second half is really starting to even out as opposed to the first half where Marquette made 13 of 16 from the charity stripe. Marquette only had six fouls in the first half. Tulane 11. Oh my goodness. Another opportunity for Tulane. You have Trovich, catch. Townsend may have altered the shot. Merritt takes it out of there. Electric light. Ooh, Travis Diener on the other end of the court went into the cameraman down there on the baseline, and he's limping. And that's why the whistle. We'll come back and check on Travis Steiner. Marquette leads it by eight. Here he comes. And that's the source of Marquette's discomfiture right there. MU unable to stop defensively and long Marquette contingent here tonight. Show you how tough it is on the road, Chris. Marquette shooting 60% from two-point land, 45% from beyond the three-point mark, and 78% from the free throw line and they're plus eight only. Well, Travis Diener apparently is okay because he stays in the game. Pull up for Kinzer. Kept alive by Brown, and that's gonna be a foul, I believe, on Todd Townsend. That is number nine. So See, Brown again, to the free throw line again. Again, after a miss, Marquette unable to come up with the defensive carom. And Marquette prides himself on rebounding, of course, their infamous rebounding drills. And they really get beat by an inferior team on the offensive glass, their defensive glass, in pivotal moments tonight. So Parker returns the favor, goes over the back of Jackson, only the green waves, fourth team foul. Tulane was got it down to a two-point lead, but thanks to Robert Jackson, they have been able to extend Has Marquette. Now Jackson will go back to the free throw line, and that's exactly what we were talking about, George. Dwayne Wade gets a high five from Tom Crean over there because they were able to find the big fella and get him the ball in scoring position. Excellent entry pass. Jackson held off nicely without fouling. And was hacked in the act. Jackson now three of four from the free throw line. Gives him nine points. Needs one more to get into double figures. He has been in double figures in every game this season. And he's there with 10 points. So as they establish Jackson in the post, they maybe can establish control of this game with 4.55 to go. They're back up by 10. Jackson, a pretty good free throw shooter for a big man, shooting 73% from there. It changes everything when you can get a big man that if he doesn't get the basket to fall and make a couple free throws for you. Now Tulane just doesn't have the bulk or the size to match up with him, so he should be able to get the ball. Cross-court pass span, leaves for Brown. Off the mark and I think over the back for Brandon Brown. Little frustration starting to set in with Tulane right now, Marquette must keep the pedal to the metal right now and really take away any hope that they can win this basketball game. Six team fouls against Sean Finney's green wave. Wade floating, short off the glass. Rebound, Jackson. Oh my goodness, he almost scored without even looking at the ball. Dwayne Wade keeps it alive, but no one could come pick up the loose ball. And now with Tari Marsh. Brown trailing the play, hits the three. Five-point swing. 
A layup halfway down, pops back out. Tulane comes down and drops a, a triple. Teener into the front court. Marquette's lead back down to seven. Merritt trying to find some room baseline. Off balance floater for Scott Merrick and back to a nine point lead. Merritt having his way down low. MU needs to continue that. Brown tried to hit another one trailing the play. Nobody under the glass for Tulane, so an easy rebound for Merritt, who now has eight in the game, George, to go along with five points. Brown taking the old flopperoo that time, trying to get a sympathy call. Not much sympathy tonight for the refs, and Parker thought he had picked Dwayne Wade's pocket. Instead, he picks up the foul. And that will put Dwayne Wade at the line as Marquette now goes into the one and one. Wade looking for the penetration. Could have gone either way. Any way you look at it, Wade steps to the line for a one and one situation with 313 left. Marquette possibly looking after a, a defensive stop or two to take the air out of the ball. Wade missed the front end of the one and one Steve Novak into the game for Townsend, clears the offensive board, finds Wade. Wade finds a little bit of room, couldn't convert, but it'll go back to the free throw line. Here is where Wade has to improve. He's shooting 73% from the line, and he will have so many more offensive opportunities. Good offensive rebound by Novak. He stayed after that. Wade just couldn't get it to fall, couldn't get it over the hump. Here's where he has to improve. This time he makes good. He now has 31, George. That is his third 30-plus point game of the season. Well, only one out of two for Wade. Back to a 10-point lead. Watari Marsh, who came out of the locker room just scorching hot, has been quiet of late. Cross-court pass picked by Wade. Inside of three minutes, Marquette with a 10-point lead. Marquette will be in no particular hurry right now. Oh, pretty lead for Jackson. And the foul. Scott Merritt off the dribble. Has really picked up his game both offensively and defensively. Can't say enough about smooth move. He's really doing some nice moves underneath the hoop, setting up his teammates, playing some excellent defense. Nice job rebounding the basketball as well. Jackson has come alive here, Chris, here in the second half. Sure has. And Tulane has started grabbing here in the last three minutes, they picked up seven fouls, George, in the last three minutes alone as Jackson converts the three-point play. Marquette now up third. Fogelman Arena, 70 years old. Tulane 7-0 this year in their cozy little arena. But Marquette trying to put an end to that and win their second straight on the road. 75-62 with 2.39 to go. Chris Roth, George Thompson. Marquette needs to play smart down the stretch and they can close this thing out, George. A couple of defensive stops and then take the air out of the basketball. Marquette looking like, looking like they're in a 2-3 zone. Marquette led by as many as 12 earlier. Tulane got it down to two, and now Marquette by 13. Another putback basket for Brandon Brown and a timeout burn by Sean Finney. That's not exactly what we had in mind. No, and uh, Tulane scored rather quickly that time. 2.16 left. Marquette plus 11. So Marquette will try to run this thing down, go deep into the shot clock, and come away with a high percentage shot. Tulane will be in the double bonus. Well, both teams, George, will be in the double bonus from here on out. Both teams now with nine fouls. Tulane probably setting up some full court pressure right now. Jeff Strom had some last minute instructions. New assistant coach this year for Tom Green. This pressure worked pretty well in the first half. Marquette, though, hasn't had much problem with it here in the second half. Oh. 
There's a problem, George. And Marsh, is he still hot? Well, he cooled off, and Jackson clears the rebound. And a reach foul on Kinzer against Dwayne Wade, and this is what you talked about. He's got to close it out at the free throw line if they're just going to hack it. Right, and uh, Tulane right now trying to extend the basketball game. They'll probably try and foul and hope that Marquette misses from the free throw line and try to trade two for one or three for two. 75-64 Marquette, 156 to go in the game. And Wade hits. He had only made one of his last three from the free throw line. Now two of his last four, 32 points and working for Mr. Wade. Thirty-three points for Mr. Wade. Seventy-seven, sixty-four, one fifty-four left. Span to Marsh. Figure the shots will start coming fast and furious, George. Marsh. Eighteen points here in the second half. Twenty-one for the game. It's an eleven-point Marquette lead, and another timeout burned by Tulane. Tulane continuing to try and set up some type of defensive situation where they can try to come up with some points quick, fast, and in a hurry. Well, after this game, Marquette will head home tonight on the charter and then head back out to play Charlotte on Saturday, ending that five road games, five out of six games away from home. And they'll be home against St. Louis, Wake Forest, or excuse me, home against DePaul and then East Carolina, then out on the road to Cincinnati, and then back home for St. Louis and Wake Forest. So then it'll be four out of five back at home. Tulane looking to press at every opportunity, showing various presses at this point. Merritt inbounds to Novak. Another good shooter on the floor here as you expect Tulane to start fouling down by 11. Time out as they were having trouble getting it up. And well, Novak is a very good weapon to uh, receive the inbounds pass in this type of situation because he's an excellent free throw shooter. Marquette has done very well from the line tonight. 14 of 18. We were talking about the upcoming schedule, so we'll tell you when the next time you can watch the Golden Eagles on TV will be. January 25th, a week from Saturday, as the Blue Demons come into Milwaukee for a 1 o'clock game. You can watch all the action right here on TV 41. Novak catches and then poked away out of bounds. What the big men have to understand is once they get the basketball, all they have to do is hold, hold it over their heads and do not bring it down by their waist and let those little guys poke that thing away. Into Novak again. And Toki taken away by Marsh. Blocked by Wade. He picked up the foul and see again. Wade had a message for Steve Novak. Novak bringing the ball back down by his waist where the little fella was right there waiting for it. So Marsh with 18 points here in the half to the free throw line. He'll get two. Marquette making things difficult for themselves by not handling the press efficiently. Now it's a nine point game. It was 13, now it's nine with a minute 26 to go. Marquette trying to hold on. There's the foul, and that'll send Scott Merritt to the free throw line. One out of two tonight. It's official. If Tulane cannot steal the ball outright, they want to stop the clock and hope that Marquette does not convert from the uh, free throw line. Trying to stretch this thing out as long as possible, Chris. <laughs> 
still a minute 24 to go. Excellent free throw shooters on the floor right now in Novak, Diener, and Merritt. Jackson, pretty good for a big man shooting around 73% as well. Well, the team, George, 74%, second best in the conference. In and out, so Merritt two for four tonight. Jackson tries to save, grabs it, but I think he stepped on the line before he could call timeout. Good hustle by the big fella. Well, Marquette by 10 with a minute 22 to go. Diener, Wade, Novak, Jackson, and Merritt. Try and close it out. They feed Marsh, beat Novak to the hole, and now another timeout. There's an area where <laughs> Novak has to really pick. Good look at Dwayne Wade tonight with 32 points for Marquette. Dwayne gave him an eye full tonight, I think. Deaver and Diener into Wade, back to Diener, back to Wade. And that'll send Dwayne to the free throw line with 106 left to go. Eight point lead. So Townsend back in the game for defensive purposes as we talked about. Novak giving up an easy layup. Well, he's only been about 50% from the line tonight. One out of two for Wade, 33 points, 79-70. With 105 left to go. Marquette trying to win for the fourth consecutive time over Tulane in the second year in a row at Fogelman Arena, which is not an easy task. And Travis Diener earlier ran into a cameraman. This time he just took out an empty chair. So you learn from these things, George. You go after the empty chair that's padded instead of the chair with the camera guy. Much more comfortable. Spans teardrop, can't find the hole, and now Travis Diener has it. Wade gets fouled by Kinzer. We're getting close to uh, some fouls that uh, should be uh, awarded as a result of uh, excessiveness. Kinzer fouls out with five. Wade will shoot two with 46.4 left to go, and Marquette up 79-70. Coach can take a little bit of time when a player fouls out. He can take a little time, huddle up. Tom Crean taking advantage of the situation as well. 46.4 left, Marquette plus nine. Dwayne Wade trying to make it 80 points. Marquette eight and one thus far this year when scoring 80 or more. And he continues to struggle from the free throw line. Well, strange. Hard to things. imagine you'd say struggle when he's got 33 points, but. That is an area where he can stand some improvement. No question about it. Okay, so Marquette plus 10 with 46 seconds left. The only time they dropped the game with scoring 80 or more was the overtime loss at Dayton, 92-85. See, the thing you don't want to do, that was a mental error by Wade. You do not want to let Tulane score with the clock stop. The clock is as much their enemy right now as Marquette was. First free throw is missed. Marsh has... 20 points here in the second half. Makes it a nine point game with 
Mark Siegel comes in, number 21, designated Fowler, I would imagine. There it is. So he's in the book. Okay, offense to defense. Tulane playing offense to defense. You know, it's not the right time of year for parades here in New Orleans, but we've certainly seen one back and forth to each charity stripe here in the last five minutes or so. And nothing but free throws. Well, what Tulane wanted to do, and uh, it's your basic uh, percentage basketball, is try to stretch the game out and try to trade uh, two for one or three for two. That's, that strategy goes right out the window, Christopher, when you make your free throw. Exactly. Merritt made the first one. But missed the second. No fouls here. No fouls. Marsh had it poked away. No fouls. Let him shoot They're it. They're wasting a lot of time getting a shot Let up. Let him shoot it. No fouls. And then they miss it. So that was textbook right there. They ran a lot of time, and they missed the shot. Diener is fouled by Brown. So he is done. 22 seconds left. They ran about 19 seconds there, George. Which has been a long stretch of time. Yeah, it's the most action we've seen <laughs> without a whistle for quite some time. You're right. Travis Diener, another night without a turnover, unofficially at this point. 12 assists against South Florida, tying the school record for assists in a conference game. And just on a great run with his assist to turnover ratio. Number two in the conference in assists. And he's playing a lot of minutes, George, but he's playing a lot of smart minutes. Well, he's basically the extension of the coach on the floor, which is one of the reasons why he's not as shooting as well as he did last year. No foul there. And we might get out of this without another free throw, George. Oh, I spoke too soon. Scott Merritt hit hard, so he will go to the free throw line. 6.2 seconds left, Marquette up 12. Should have been an intentional. I don't know if we can see that again, but clearly not going after the ball. Merritt hits the first, makes it a 13-point game, matching the largest lead for Marquette. Fans here starting to latch on to anything now that they see it's a lost cause. <laughs> Telling Marquette that it'll be cold when they get home tonight. <laughs> Layup counts at the buzzer, but just window dressing for Tulane. They lose their first game of the season, George, at Fogelman Arena. A tough road win for Marquette. Make it two in a row away from home in Conference USA for Tom Crean. 85. 73 the score. Marquette goes to 11 and 3 overall, 3 and 1 in the conference. George and I will come back and wrap it up, take a look at the final stats. When we come back, Marquette a winner tonight on TV 41.